What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Summit Tech once again, coming at you with another tech video. <laughs> Almost got you there. You thought we were going to do a mining video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the NZXT H510 Elite PC case, gaming PC case, and all of the features and such that it offers. So if you're interested in this case, let me know in the comment section below why you're interested in it, and let's hop right in. Uh, defeat the bears. The H510 Elite Compact ATX Mid Tower is a RGB focused build. So there is the H510 Compact and then there's H510i and then now the Elite. The kind of special things about this particular case is it does include two ARGB fans. They are on the front of the case and they're 140 millimeter. You are gonna have the Cam Link software as well as the Cam Link RGB controller included in this case. And it does come with one RGB strip on the top of the case as well. You may want to add some additional. It should be easy to daisy chain them as coming off of that RGB strip is your standard three pin connector. So you can just connect up some additional fans that are compatible. Or of course you could also do some additional RGB strips as well. It does include two more fans, a single 120 millimeter in the rear and a single 140 millimeter in the top. They are non RGB. So if you're wanting to get some additional lights, uh, in the case, you can, of course, order some RGB fans with the case when you do that. Now that is going to increase, of course, your investment into the case. It does come in at $149 and you're probably looking at spending another 60 bucks on RGB fans if you want to match those two. And that's just a little kind of note there for you to keep in mind. Now this particular model is the black on black. They only have one other color offering in this particular set and that's going to be a white on black uh, aesthetic and it's really up to you which one you prefer. There are more color options in the H510i so you know if you're looking for more color options maybe you can get that for like $99 and then pick up the RGB separate. Just something to keep in mind. Hopping into the specifications, dimensions are 210 millimeters wide, 435 millimeters high, and 428 millimeters deep. And that is without the feet. With the feet, it is going to be 460 millimeters high. And you're gonna to wanna to keep the feet intact if you're gonna go with the standard configuration of the install of the power supply because it does suck air from the bottom, luckily through a removable and cleanable filter. The front, however, does not have a removable filter as they are kind of riveted in with plastic. If you try to remove it, you're probably gonna break it. So you will just have to take the side panel off and luckily, that is a workaround as you can take the side panel off and then clean that filter for the front intake. The materials are steel and tempered glass. You do have a black coating. The black coating on the main panels is very solid. However, when you move into the internal panels or the internal workings of the case, the coating, the black paint coating does come off pretty easily. Anytime you're removing screws, uh, from the bottom even, I did notice that we did scratch up the case when we were removing the hard drive bay, for example. And, and speaking of hard drive bays, you have two plus one, two and a half inch bay support and two plus one, three and a half inch bay support, uh, just so you are aware of what you support as far as that goes. Your clearance is cable management, 19 to 23 millimeters, GPU clearance up to 368.6 millimeters without front radiator installed and up to 313.6 millimeters with a front radiator installed. The nice thing about the radiator front mount is is that it does support both 140 millimeter and of course 120 millimeter fans going all the way up to a 280 millimeter radiator support 
in the front. It is water cooling friendly, super simple to install. It's similar to what Corsair has done or implemented in the front of their cases where you basically just uninstall the bracket with two screws, pull it out and then install your radiator as well as your fans and then install the bracket back in and you're good to go. Super clean, super easy to install and I appreciate that design very much. Next you have a vertical GPU mount with a clearance of 40.64 millimeters. You'll want to keep that in mind. A little taller like let's say the XFX uh, RX 5700 XTs where they are a 2.9 uh, slot card will not fit in that rig. So you'll need to have a standard two slot card is what the support is for that. Otherwise you're gonna be banging up against the glass. To support the vertical mount, you will also need to have a PCI riser, which I'll link down in the description below, along with the case in case you want a vertical mount. Now, vertical mounting is going to decrease in most cases the airflow to the GPU, so keep that in mind. It may run a little hotter. However, you get those sweet, sweet looks, and if you're ordering an RGB case, I'm assuming that's kind of what you're going for. The other kind of caveat to that is you could go water cooled right so if you're water cooled on that gpu with a vertical mount it's going to look mwah, fantastic and then you're not going to have the same cooling issues uh, there at all in fact the cooling should be a little bit better when we're talking about water cooling not just because of the water block but also because the airflow will be running over the back of the gpu there keeping the the rear components uh, a little bit cool or the rear side of the components a little bit cooler. All right, so we've covered the GPU mounting and let's talk about the CPU cooler. You can go up to 165 millimeters on the CPU cooler height, so keep that in mind. However, once again, this is going to be leaning towards, at the very least, probably an AIO for looks. And, and if you're gonna go with an AIO, once again, that front support is going to be up to 280 millimeters in the front for that rad. And then if you're going custom liquid cooling, you have support for up to a 280 millimeter uh, radiator in the front with a 140 millimeter radiator in the top and support for a 120 millimeter radiator in the rear. So you should have enough to basically cool at least you know, a CPU and a single GPU. However, you know, if you're looking at maybe doing SLI or Crossfire or multi-GPU rigs, you may want to look at a different uh, case, maybe going all the way up to the 710i or going all together with something I would probably recommend like a Lee and Lee or something along those lines if you're going to go that route. Now the front and rear radiator supports are up to 60 millimeters thick, at least advertised. I did not test that, but um, I know that for now, of course, the 30 millimeter fits in just fine. You could probably even go thicker, honestly, on the front because there is nothing really blocking it until you get to the cable management bars. Uh, but if you're gonna go in front of the case instead, or in front of the bracket instead of the rear of the bracket, then you need to take into account the thickness of the fans and the thickness of the radiator, and those are gonna need to be under 60 millimeters. That being said, like I said, you can mount the radiator on the back side of that bracket and then you get some more room. Reservoir and pump up to 180 millimeters along cable bar and up to 86 millimeters along bottom panel. Motherboard support goes all the way up to ATX with support for micro ATX and mini ITX as well. Your front IO ports include one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C, one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A, one headset audio jack, and a front IO internal header. The header is super clean and comes ready to go into a standard front panel header so you don't have to fumble around with all individual pins for your power, reset, light, and so on. I really like that simplification of things as well. In case you don't have a standard motherboard though with the standard front panel output, which I haven't seen one of those in forever, it does include an adapter so you can make the adjustment. All air intakes advertised for filters, but that's kind of uh, a little deceptive. So yes, all air intakes as the case is designed do have filters, 
but the 120 millimeter exhaust in the rear and the 140 millimeter exhaust in the top do not have air filters. So if you're gonna do a reverse configuration, uh, this would not be filtered. And you just need to keep that in mind. It's a little deceptive when they word it like that, in my humble opinion. You do have the smart device version two, which includes three fan channels with a max of 10 watts per channel output, two RGB LED channels, each support up to four Q2 addressable LED strips or five AER RGB to fans built-in noise detection module as well so you can keep the noise under control with the cam software if a splitter is used fan control is regulated depending on the fan connected to the four pin port do not use low noise adapters this is going to be something that comes with for example the noctua cpu coolers so you're not going to want to use that adapter uh, with this particular module if you do uh, end up going with a Noctua, for example. Now the fans that come with the case are going to go from 500 to 1500 RPMs with an advertised airflow of 30 to 91 CFM, which is pretty dang good, and noise between 22 and 33, 33 decibels. Air pressure of 0.17 to 1.52 millimeters and the bearing is a fluid dynamic bearing. You are getting high quality fans in here. The fan connector is a four pin PWM in case you want to bypass the fan slash RGB cam controller. You have a two year warranty and that wraps up all the specifications for the case. Building into the case, the thoughts are this. If you built into an, AT, uh, an NZXT case in the past, this is going to be a breeze. You have the cable management bar along with all of the cable management straps and pathways on the rear of the panel, making it a super simple and intuitive install process. Once again, the radiator install is probably one of the most simple out there right now, simple designs, and you can do that, of course, with uh, pretty much a lot of other Corsair cases now and NZXT, NZXT cases as well. The front panel is removable, but there is not a mesh replacement. You are going to be depending on intake all from the filtered intake on the rear side panel and the front will not have any intakes at all on the front left panel where the glass is. So you only have that one intake and it can be a little bit starved. If you're looking for, of course, the best airflow, you're gonna wanna go with a mesh front panel design, uh, maybe from another company. They have some that support both, you know, the glass and the, the mesh fronts and you should know who I'm talking about. Uh, kudos to the person in the comment section who can name that case and I mean that's going to be something that you need to take into consideration if you're wanting the best performance of the parts installed in the rig at the coolest temperatures possible this case is probably not the one however for ease of use uh, included components all the RGB stuff and the price point, this case comes in at a steal. And it's really hard for me to not recommend it because anybody that gets this case and builds into it is going to be excited with the end results, provided they've ever built in anything before and even have the slightest inkling uh, or ability to cable manage. So it's not even, it's just, it's super duper simple. You're gonna come out with a clean build if you need help with cable management and there's something confusing and you want to know where that cable needs to be run, you can hit me up in Discord. I'll leave the link down in the description below and I'll be happy to help you. So without further ado, here is the picture of the rig. Once we had it fully assembled, we're rocking an MSI RTX 2070 with the Intel i7-10700K and 16 gigs of memory running at 32 100 megahertz. We have a one terabyte SSD, which is SATA over M.2, and we are running an 850 watt 
Corsair power supply. Links for all of the PC build parts will be in the description below as well. And if you are interested in the build video, be sure you let me know so I can kind of plan out when the build video for that particular one comes out, including some built-in benchmarks, of course, so you can get an idea of the performance. We did end up going with an MSI 240 millimeter cooler AIO and the reason for that is we didn't have the NZXT option currently available in stores and I needed one uh, right then. That being said, I've been very impressed with the MSI 240 millimeter uh, AIO because it has an in-rad pump and the temperatures were well on the 10700K and Ida 64. Just a fun note real quick for you guys because this, this is amazing. We ran Ida 64 with FPU for 20 minutes and did not go over 65 degrees Celsius in Texas in about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So, mmm, mmm. I'm super impressed with it. Overall, as you can tell though, the build turned out clean and it's a lot thanks to how easy it is to build in the NZXT H510 Elite and the pre-installed lighting that comes with it. It is a little dark and I would recommend at least one more RGB strip as well as throwing in some RGB fans in the top and rear locations of the case for support there. So, positives, easy to build in, uh, looks good, and then we kind of stop there. Negatives, the internal paint does scratch, and of course your airflow is not going to be the best compared to some competitors. If this video was helpful for you, let me know in the comment section below. Be sure, once again, to hit that subscribe, hit that notification, Come visit me over on twitch.tv slash blindrod where I play video games and ask any questions that you may have. Until later, I'll see you next Tuesday.